What up, everybody? It's Vinny Guadagnino, and you are watching Growing Up Italian. This is going to be a fire episode. Don't want to miss it. Most requested guest, <laughs> Gu guest, guest. One of the most, one of the most re requested guests again, Vinny Guadagnino again. Has I've been on this? I show. know a lot of people don't know that you were on the show. That's how far back we go. Yep, I was on the show because you guys have blown up since with the clips and everything. But we were in like the what was it that market Canal Street Market yeah, can, or something? So I do have to admit that wasn't our show. <laughs> Was that, it, didn't that it was, roll on here, though? That was New York Nico's show. But you didn't put it out as your podcast? Well, the video, yeah. <laughs> so I think that's kind of cheating. You used it? Uh, we were we've excited. never did like a sit-down yeah. growing up. We were uh, excited to to get you on the show. Yeah, so. me no. too. It's my it's my mom's favorite podcast. That means a lot. <laughs> I mean, your mom's a legend. Thank you, thank From you. From seeing her on, my on mom, the show you yeah, know, every day. Instagram trapped her. Even she... Is part of the uh, she has the algorithm now. Yeah. So she was probably watching like some Italian guy cooking, and then eventually it led to you guys. So, and yeah. you know, so you said she, she's a big Joe Gambino fan, right? Yeah. Once in a while, she'd be like, "Oh, you see this guy? I love him." And, and I'm like, "How oh. I feel about that?" I'm like, <laughs> I, "I know, I know this guy, or I don't know him, but I know him from your guys' stuff, you know." Um, but yeah, you know, I'm uh. I'm Italian. I know you guys. We go way back and stuff, so it's a pleasure to be here. It's not every day you get to talk about being Italian, right? That's why I have my... Your guinea tea on. Am I allowed to say guinea tea on this yeah. show? Uh, okay. I think as of today, we're allowed to. I have to. on my wife lover. Wife lover. Not there wife beater. See, that's better. Guinea tea is better than that other term. Yeah. I'm bringing them back. I'm bringing them back. So I need a little sauce on it. Where does your mom come from in Italy? She comes from Sicily, from a small town called Sant'Agata, Sicily. Um, and it's funny, my dad, she was born there. She came here when she was like 13. My dad was born here, but when they met on Staten Island, coincidentally, they were both from the same town. So my whole lineage goes back to this one town in Sicily, like Santaga to Sicily. And it's very, it's almost like, cause we went there on the show on Jersey shore when we went to Italy and it's almost like Hawaii vibes, even though I've never been to Hawaii, but it's like mountainous volcano and beach, and, beach, yeah, and yeah. country right next to it. So it's pretty dope. I, you know, my family, you know, I'm not really, people don't realize like Sicilians are different than, are you Sicilian or no? No, oh, but okay. I mean, I'm very familiar. It's different. It's yeah. different. It's I mean, especially, it's not even maybe not Sicily, but it's just like country versus city. Like, my family are country people. Yeah. Like, they, you know, hunters, fisher, fishermen. Living off the land. Living off the land. Um, like I said, just by the beach. And then they came here to Staten Island, and they pretty much did the same shit. You know, they had, I think they still have horses in the backyard. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, like, they never left those things behind, you know. So, so. Was your mom born there? My mother, yeah, she was born in Sicily, and they all came here when she was like th 12 or 13 or something right. like so that. So similar like us. Yep. My mom was seven. Yeah. Yep. Go when go I go first ahead. saw you, Vin, yep. I was like, this guy's one of us. You could just tell. Like, I don't know. You're really? Being yeah, you know, because similar. I agree with you guys, too, because the whole thing about Jersey Shore, obviously, you know, the Italian flag painted on the garage mm -hmm. door and stuff, but there is Guido Jersey culture which you don't even have to be Italian to be. Mm -hmm. Most of the people on my show aren't even Italian, you know. Then there's, like, the real... I don't want to say real. It's just different. Different, like, Italian-American growing up culture. <laughs> growing up Italian <laughs> culture. <laughs> growing up Italian culture. <laughs> That's a clip. That's a clip. Um, clip which that. is not really that Guido-ish. Mm -hmm. It could be, but it also, you know, like, you guys, I wouldn't know you're, like, Italian right off the bat. You know, but if you were orange skin and t basically looked like Paulie D, every <laughs> everybody would be like, oh, shit, you're Italian, you yeah, know? Yeah. So I kind of fall into that category yeah. where your parents are 
actually really from there, but you're not like, you know, a Guido looking thing. So ironically, yeah, I was the most Italian one yes. that looked the least like this yeah. stereotypical Italian. Yeah. And when we were watching the show, that's what I... And I think that's why you resonated with us so much. Cause yeah, because like that's how we look, right. you know? <laughs> and that's what I also... I think that's what got me on the show. Because I was like, I party at the shore. I'm Italian. I have a big family. But uh, I don't look like the typical juice head Guido, you know? So they needed that, like, different... I say it's like a Guido spectrum. <laughs> you got, like, the pale... Me, yeah. and then you have Paulie on the other side, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? The spectrum. They yeah. cover it every day. There's we two types of Italians. The, the ones that get tan as hell, and then the ones like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I do get tan, though. I got to get burnt yeah. first, and then yeah, I get yeah, tan. It's the yeah. worst, though. You got to <laughs> yeah. get that initial peel. <laughs> right. So, Vin, but, I uh, want yeah. to talk a little bit about, you know, your life before, you know, the camera. Growing up mm -hmm. in Staten Island, what was that like growing up? Uh, Staten Island, let's see. Well, I grew Staten up... Staten Italy. I, yeah, Staten Italy, for sure. I grew up... Um, with no money, very, you know, working parents that just basically worked for whatever cash they made that day, you know, no savings accounts or no, anything like that. Um, yeah, so my, my, you know, we were spoiled when it came to food and when it came to like Jordans, but, you know, they weren't, we grew up, it, it was very, uh, what's the word, like modest, uh, yeah. humble beginnings, let's just yeah. say. So, yeah, you know, I was just like, on Staten Island, um, my family, Italian, all lived in the same neighborhood, obviously. Um, they what part of Staten Island are you from? Like the North Shore. Uh, there's like South Shore and North Shore. Yeah. So I'm like from the North Shore. Um, anywhere, anyone who knows where like Wagner High School is, yeah, I grew okay. up right okay. in that area over there. Um, yeah, my family like immigrated to Staten Island and then like set up shop there like, like it's Sicily. Like they recreated <laughs> yeah. it and then they never left. I think they've been, my grandmother's been to like Sicily more than she's been to Manhattan. Like, <laughs> that's, that's like going real. overseas. Yeah, yeah, I live in Manhattan now and it's like I live in another country, you know. My mother like almost had a heart attack. I'm like, mom, 20 minutes away, you know. Um, well, what really resonated, like speaking about your mom, on the show when she would make those like huge meals. Yeah, like, I mean like, like, it was funny because like when she used to come, like <laughs> I'm like, this is nothing. This is what we do, you know, like bringing, but I had no idea that it was going to become like a bit of the show, like the Italian mom bringing all the food and stuff. Like, that's just what we do. My mother, bring, like, I just, I have a house in the Hamptons for the summer. Like she came up like, for two days and she had a truck full of shit. I'm like, ma, you're here for two days. Like, I don't need 14 jars of Nutella, which I don't even eat. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, you know, but she brings a whole grocery store. That's how my family is, like very loving people. We had Sunday dinner every week. Um, we wouldn't miss it. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I kind of grew up there. But also at a certain time, I had to put it down and, you know, spread my wings a little bit and go other places, you know. So, yeah. That must have been hard to like for your mom to accept, right? Well, it's funny because I tried to live in L.A. for like a year and that was like, holy shit, like I am not anywhere near my mom, you know? And it's funny because you guys are obviously close with your family, but I went to LA because I, since I, I loved LA and I love acting and I love entertaining. And anybody that wants to be an actor and entertainer, somewhere in my mind, I'm like, you have to live in LA yeah, at some point. Like my favorite actors have all lived in, like DiCaprio has probably lived in LA at some point. So I'm like, I want to chase my dreams. Like I didn't go away to college. Let me make this my little college experience. Like going to, it was a pretty dope experience. I'm living in the fucking Hollywood Hills, yeah. like, like a baller, you know? But being away from my family and like realizing that during any downtime that I have, I feel like I should be with my family. Yeah. That's like time that you're wasting. And I said to myself, I'm like, if it costs me, if this is the price it takes to pay to be the next DiCaprio, then I don't want to do it. Word, uh, you know what I mean? Was there like a specific breaking point for you where you're like, I need to go back to New York? Or No, nah, I mean, honestly, the plan was to always be like bi-coastal and I'm kind of like, because everyone sells like bi-coastal, like it's this easy thing to do. It's not easy at all. New York, LA, and the bio. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, LA, Literally, no. it's the hardest thing to do. It's like the most confusing life 
you're like, where do I put my shit? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what license do I have? You know, I'm yeah. like, and that when I got there too, like, Italy, uh, Italy, uh, LA is cool to visit and shit, but like, you realize like these aren't my people. Like, you know, I used to, I think I probably used to look at you guys and like, it really made me appreciate New Yorkers mm -hmm. and like being there. Actually, it gave me perspective. It was the best thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I don't regret it at all because it made me go, New York is where I yeah. want to be. I want to be with my people that are just like the realest people ever um, with Italians mm -hmm. <laughs> and also like within 20 minutes away from my family for that extra like quality time that I need to get like once a week. No, you just reminded me when you said that the first time I met you with New York Nico, you said that you just moved back from L.A. Did it? Was it? Yeah. Was it then? First, you were in Staten Island, right? Yeah. When you first, came I had out. like a little like midlife crisis during COVID, uh -huh. like we all did. Yeah, of course. And like I thought I was gonna die, so I'm like, you I got a house in Staten Island, right? No, no, I lived in Staten Island, but I'm, I, I had, to, I always wanted to get out of there, but COVID kind of like pushed me to like be like, our life is finite, and like we are mortal, and it kind of made a lot of people did that. A lot of people like started looking on Zillow and shit. I just am stupid and have money. Like they should have never gave me money because I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just buy that house. <laughs> like I was, a pair I was, of sneakers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was actually out there though doing a show. I was doing a show called The Mass Dancer. It's like The Mass Singer, where like shout out the Hammerhead Shark. <laughs> um, so I'm doing The Mass Dancer. I went to go look at this house and it was like my dream house. And I'm like, all right, guess I'm bi coastal now. And, uh, you know, and so you were renting in LA and no, no, I, I, I owned in Staten Island and then I saw this house and then I decided to buy it. And, um, and then it was funny cause I was going to use it as an investment if I didn't like it, but then I put it on the market like nine months later and it sold for like $400,000 more. Wow. And I'm like, That's I'm just going to get right? out of here. You know what I mean? I honestly like just, like I, I might've made $5 on the sale because of the closing Jeez. costs. Yeah. So yeah, that's how much money you have to make to even break even. But I'm still happy about it. I didn't lose or anything. And uh, it was a good, like I said, it was a good learning experience for me. I would actually, I, I wouldn't mind going back there one day, like in a, in a more like second home type of vibe, you know? But my main thing, again, has to be close to, no pun intended, the mothership, which, yeah. which where my, my niece and my nephew and my family live now, you know? Yeah, like if you, if you were to live in Staten Island and you were married with kids, you think that would be the best life for your family if you were to do that? Or would you be happier in Manhattan? Or yeah, no, nah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy where I am now. Um, I mean, yeah, if you have kids and stuff, you need the space, you know? Um, but I wouldn't, that just makes me uh, hungry for more money. Like, when I want space for my family, like, that's why I still do this shit. I still hustle every day because, like, I get into an apartment in Manhattan that's, like, you know, 1,200 square feet. I'm like, no, now I need 2,500. You know what I mean? Then so I'm going to be a bigger apartment. Yeah, I'm going to need a bigger apartment. I got to work harder. I got to figure it out. I got to fucking go on this show. got to start a podcast. got to do, you know, like, I always, I have, like, an obsessive mind with, like, trying to work and do the next thing you know so hopefully one day yeah i'll be like in that baller apartment and because i'm poor right now mm -hmm. in my neighborhood and my shit is mad money <laughs> I, have, I have a fucking penthouse but like i'm like the poor guy you know so manhattan's like stupid money but you know what i like about manhattan though just it's tangent you go to la you go to miami and shit and like you see money you see flashiness you see yachts and you see lambos and shit bro those fucking little apartments that you just walk by so unassuming in Manhattan cost more than yeah. all that shit Eight combined. Million, 10 million, yeah. 16 million yeah. for like a three bedroom Tribeca. Like you're just walking past it. Like it's nothing like, cause new, new like that's, I just love that vibe about New York. It's like people have money, but it's not like in your face. It's more like low key and subtle with it. That fits my personality more. I'm not like a flashy guy. So when you go to Miami and this shit, it, they're fun, but like you're in this constant competition to wear, you know, brands and fucking, have the nicest car and have the biggest house with the infinity pool and shit. Like again, like I, I don't want my constant state of being to be that, you know what I mean? I want that. Like that's fun for like a weekend to get a yacht or something. Yeah. But like where I live, I just want to be day, like, yeah, just like fun. chill. And like, that's what I love about Manhattan. Meanwhile, Manhattan, like you pull up in an Uber, you know, yeah. pull up in a fucking cab. Uber. <laughs> I, I took, I took, the, a, I took the train here. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And the last time I, and the first time I met you, you were like, oh, I just took the train here. I'm like, why? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. You're Vinny, bro. Like, you, did you go incognito? Or you the train know? fucking gets, the, is faster than it any, is, than anything faster, else. Yeah. You know, what am I going to have a fucking Maybach chauffeur that's going to take forever? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm totally, people don't give a shit usually for the most part. I could just kind of wear a hat and sunglasses and shit. And, uh, but even if I didn't, they wouldn't really, you just kind of blend in yeah. in the city, you know? People don't, people are doing their own thing, minding their business. One thing about New Yorkers is they mind their fucking business. Do you guys curse on the show? Or you yeah, got yeah, to either blur good, it out. Okay, okay. Right, we're good, we're good. Okay. <laughs> I'll just say that train, that train ad's like, if you see something, say something. Right. Like, yeah. they have to remind you to say something. Like, literally, yeah. Like, please. <laughs> and or it's like, this is how much, New York, how much New Yorkers mind their business. And then you'll see, like, somebody, like, fucking on the floor. And, like, <laughs> someone reading the, the Bible. <laughs> yeah, we've seen it all in New York. Man. Yeah, it's the best. You, you got to walk us through, like, what's your... Uh, I know you do the get ready with me. Mm -hmm. Like you stay on the trends, like a day way. in the life on the the TikTok. Trends, yeah, yeah. You are on it, bro. Yeah, he, he was one of the first people I saw like calling everybody in the cast and like hanging up. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, and then everybody else started doing that. Yeah, I'm at like a, a pretty good age. I'm 35 now, um, which is funny because I just did a show that like I was the oldest guy, and they're all making fun of me. I'm like, I'm the young guy. I'm the young guy on Jersey Shore, <laughs> and whatever. But. uh I'm at a good age where I'm like in between both generations, you know, where like I can kind of chill with the older people and stuff, but I'm still in touch with the kids on TikTok and shit. But you know the sounds to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just know which ones are gonna like kind of hit with my with my family and stuff. Um, I mean, my family with my with my fans, I know which sounds are gonna kind of hit. But yeah, with those day in the life things, I I feel like people just they like watching somebody just be normal. I always tell people, like, the number one thing that's going to get hits or if you want to be famous or if you want to stand out on a reality show or even do stand-up comedy, anything is authenticity. It's not whether you're the funniest, whether you're the craziest, whatever. It's if someone's watching just someone be really who they are, that's what's going to fucking resonate with people. It could be boring as hell, but, like, if someone's really just being themselves, for some reason, it has some kind of, like magnetism towards it and people just are drawn to it so that's what i try to do like on my that's who i am i can't be anybody else honestly so when you were growing up what what did you think you were gonna do when you grew up like what was your dream so that's funny i uh i used to like all right so i used to always be like a little actor i would oh i was always in school plays oh, really? and i would always be like a ham like i would always like there was something about me that was really good at like being on a stage and like commanding the audience, right? So it was always something like, like I, I used to go to, it's a funny podcast to say this on, but I used to go to like Jimmy Whispers acting school. Wow. On Staten Island. <laughs> that's incredible. Is that, is that, that's for real? Like you're for real? Yeah. That exists? That's is, awesome. Is man. Jimmy Whispers a real guy? From a Bronx Tale. Yes, I know. Yeah, Correct. him. It's really him? Clem oh, Caserta. Oh, my God. He had an acting school. <laughs> is this still around? I don't know. You might have to Google this, this how great, he's doing. This is a great, like, plug. You're welcome. Jimmy. No, no, I don't. That's why I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying not to talk about it that much because he's like a kind of guy. That motherfucker was, he built a whole career of being like, you know, a one second actor on every single movie that Robert De Niro is in he that, shit. that he's like making an acting school as if like he was doing like <laughs> Lee, he reinvented the wheel. Lee Strasberg <laughs> acting I'm like that's basically my Instagram profile <laughs> like I've got like pictures of everybody from one second like. Bro, but this guy this guy came to my high school one day like recruiting <laughs> the best place to recruit people for Jimmy Whispers acting school is a is a high school in Staten Island because you are God, you know what I mean? Bronx tail, kids used to wear Bronx tail shirts. So this guy came and like, you know, anything. He's like, yeah, you coming to my acting school. I'm like, oh, I'm there, you know? So like, <clears throat> I went to his school and uh, I think I started like teaching classes at one point. I was like seven years old. <laughs> really? <laughs> he would just do anything so he didn't have to pay people. He would just oh, like, man, uh, he'd be like, oh sense. yeah, you're the teacher now. I'm like, all right, let's, let's do it, you know? <laughs> Lord, did you find it on Google? Is it there? Well, I, I don't see any... Um, it probably wouldn't be. It was in like a weird basement. Not, not on Google, but he does have it in his Instagram bio. <laughs> it was... It was, He has an Instagram? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Clem Caserta does have an Instagram. It's the real Jimmy Whispers. Yeah. The he's, real, um, not the he's, fake one. He's hanging on to that. He's <laughs> hanging on, he's hanging on to, <laughs> to you that. You think he's, he like... He, he knew that he taught you? Like, if I were to ask him, you know, Vinny... Yeah, because I... I well... He was like, a, you know, I, I don't want to like, this is a podcast, but I'll tell you off air, like, but it just wasn't, 
it was what it was. Like we, I did his little classes and shit. I'm just telling you how I got into like yeah. always want. And I used to do school plays and mm-hmm. shit too, you know. But I think I don't know if later he realized that like I actually blew up and shit. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he did later on, but because um, that was the dream. The dream was to be an actor. The dream was to be in something. You know, um, I think it was because I just grew up so like you know low key and shit that I wanted something bigger. I wanted, I always wanted to like, like I had this girl that I had a crush on and like, she like was my little lover for like one summer in eighth grade. She was like the hottest girl. That's why I have a complex of like getting the hottest girl. Cause like this one summer, this hot girl gave me attention and I didn't deserve, like I went from like being a loser to like, she was friends with my cousin and like it was like a like a movie. Like we were outside one day. I was playing basketball, and like the hottest girl in the world, in, to me at that time in the school, liked me. And I was like this like little ugly like seventh grader, you know. And everyone started looking at me different. They were like, "Oh shit!" Like you know, how did he pull that? It was seventh to eighth grade summer or eighth to high school. I was it. She was in the eighth. Well, okay, she was in the seventh grade. I think I was in the sixth grade. Because what happened was she so, was a year older too. She was a year older. That's godlike, bro. It was. <laughs> Like that movie where the guy with the nerd is with like the hottest girl. What was that movie? Girl Next Door or something? Something like that. But anyway, it was like that. It was that scenario. And um, I was like, damn, I didn't know I can pull like that. But then she. got a dog in you. But then I got. (laughs) But then she. uh, Once she hit high school. It's over. Forgot about me. So long, bro. Left me in the dust. She had a drug dealer driving a fucking sick Ultima. Oh, in Staten Island, just like he had, the, and he had the box in there, and like this, he, yo, <laughs> this guy was cool, man. And I was like, I was just going through puberty. I was like, but like again, I don't know what it was, but that used to fuel me to be something. Like literally, like this crush that I had on this girl, and just like my, you know, seeing my family's hard life and everything. I was like, I have to be something. Like so, I always wanted to be. I said, look. I used to sit in my bed and look at the ceiling and like, I think I, at the time I read like The Secret too and I used to be like, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be something. I'm going to be in LA one day and she's going to see me on that carpet and she's going to want me. Which That's by great. the way, it ended up- She does. <laughs> she does. Did you end up taking it down? Not taking it down, uh, but and I don't want to be rude, but <laughs> we, we, we hung out. It just didn't work out. I don't even know if she knows it's her. You should have took it down wow. for the culture. Nah, I couldn't. I, it's it, we didn't click like that, honestly. Which is funny because once it was it was more of an idea in my head, but once it actually happened, it was like, oh wait, this is whatever. You gotta answer this though. What? Was she still a dime? Yeah, she was. She yeah. was beautiful. She was a beautiful girl. But also, my perspective, my scope of the world has changed a lot. Since I got off Staten Island, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, a so, lot of change when you leave Staten Island. Um, yeah. So wait, what was it? Oh yeah, so I had that drive to like to really be something and shit. So I used to like pray to be like famous and stuff. And also that's why in school when I cuz I wanted to graduate college, I got a political science degree cuz I was like, all right, if I'm not going to be like a famous actor, I want to be a lawyer. Because there's only a couple things that are like really I feel like I want to be something special, like a doctor, lawyer, actor. That's really it. But that was actually taking a big risk in Staten Island because everybody does the city jobs. That's the culture. Yeah. It's like yeah. get a city job. Sanitation. Yeah. Day too. Safety. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, and then I'm not going to lie. I can't like I don't have this inspirational story. I just filled out the application and got lucky. You know, what happened to me was just like... Is that like the first thing you really applied for? First thing. I did like I did like one Craigslist, like weird independent movie where like I showed up and started like making out with some girl, which it was funny because... Was it Jimmy Whispers? It was in that wheelhouse. It was in, it was in the Jimmy Whispers realm of existence. But yeah, like I did like one Craigslist thing. And then the next thing I did was like... Um, it had nothing to do with acting. I just, again, like... I wanted to just be something, right? So, like, this girl sent me this application for the show, and she's like, yo, you should apply to this. And I'm like, all right, fuck it, why not? Not the same girl, a different girl. Different girl, girl, yeah. And I just did it, and uh, then they called me back, like, I've told the story a million times, I don't have to get into it, but they called me back, like, seven months later, and then then the rest is luck, you know what I mean? So What I wanted to touch on was your family, you know, Mm -hmm. you explaining that to them. They sound like off the boat, old school family. Yeah. 
How did they take that? Like, yo, shoot for the stars, or is it? Um, Lily, get fired, television. You know what's funny? Like when I used to like tell people I wanted to be a lawyer, they never looked at me seriously. They used to look like there was no one ever being like. My mom wasn't touring law schools with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which she, sh- I don't say she should have been, but like you know, if I wanted to do that, then. But it was almost like that was just like a non-starter in my family, like doing something like that. And then when it came to TV, it was kind of cool, but also like a far-fetched dream that, but you know, I mean, they knew I liked acting and entertaining and shit like that. So my mom would take me to like Jimmy Whisper's acting school. That's the farthest she would go though. You know, was like, um, but then, yeah, I remember like when I did do the Jersey Shore thing, it was mad sketchy. I had to like fly to like, LA they told me like a night before because that's the way like the reality show TV industry works is like they'll be like come here tomorrow you know like drop your whole life and I did I like I told my dad I'm like I'm going to LA to like meet somebody I don't know where I'm going it looked like I'm like I just googled the production company they had like one other two other shows at the time but yeah I could have been going to get kidnapped and you know the same story would have happened but yeah I uh it was kind of crazy they kind of just was like I don't know. They were kind of like worried, but at the same time, not so worried. They let me do my thing, you know? Uh, family support's uh, so important. But even sometimes like, you know, old school parents, you know, even what we do, like social media stuff. Yeah. My my dad, my mom, they support, but they don't really understand what what's going exactly on. exactly we do. Yeah. Like, you know, they see Vinny from Jersey Shore sitting down on the potty. Like, <laughs> how is this possible? Like, you know, now that we're, you know, the yeah. guest went up and I guess they do what understand. they do. And, you know, we're growing up and, you know, like... Uh, Off shoot. the boat parents, you know? Like, your Very, mom was born there. Yeah. My mom... They're kind of like set in their ways, right? Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Like they they just know to work 14 hours a day. Yeah. Pay stay the bills, in your, Stay in your money. comfort zone. Don't go anywhere. Don't, you know... Um, which, you know, some qualities are admirable and shit. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, I mean, if you work hard and you love what you do like you guys do like look what you built you know yeah. so i think it's and especially now with social media like anybody mm-hmm. can start doing anything if they really want to you know so i don't uh, want to talk too much about the show but after yeah. the show how is life as far as like you know coming from a place like Staten Island, it's that neighborhood like oh i know this kid this is paula's son yeah you know you know the one that lives over there and, yeah you know she's cousins with this one like how is the well, life. like, tell me <laughs> regular you know, life? Funny stories about that. Like, you know, just like your mom had to ask you, like, do me a favor. You got to go here. For- oh, that <laughs> happens. My dad calls me every day. He's like, yo, I need this video for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's my <Sure>. mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure. Um, he's like, like, he'll all call me and like, tell me like, you know, this guy wants you at his event and shit. Like next, like, like the two, two Octobers from now. I'm like, bro, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Um, my mom, actually it's funny. My mother gets recognized more than I do. She can't walk around really? Staten Island because she got like the big hair and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm rolling around in a cap and people don't give a fuck, you know? But or... my mother is a character. So she walks around and gets like recognized all the time because she became a uh, extension of me, like a character on the show, you know? Yeah. But yeah, no, I was like, I when I did the show, I was 21. So I never really, that was like my whole life you know what i mean like i was a teenager and then boom it was like instant fame flying around the country i was in a new state every weekend multiple states doing like nightclub appearances and and doing that shit and then um always coming back to staten island and recharging with my family sunday dinner i would literally land on the plane and go to my aunt's house and have sunday dinner like every sunday it was like my favorite thing to do um that hangover sunday dinner had different but but it's yeah oh so different but it's funny like staten island though still to this now like there's a new wave of people I haven't really been back there a lot but they don't really bother me too because they're kind of like it's like big egos on staten island so I like no. yeah so you <laughs> so you can walk around the gym and like no no one's gonna really like say, say shit to you if i was in like fucking like a more friendly place then a lot of people would come up to me but yeah staten island is kind of it's kind of chill you know do you defend staten island like because you know it's the most memeable place <laughs> Um. Well, I laugh at the memes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I hysterically laugh There's at the memes. There's some truth to it. Hundred percent. There's definitely truth to it. Um. Yeah, it's its own. It's its own world. It's 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 its own bubble. And I really 
now understand that more than ever from moving away from it, from yeah. like living so close, but still it's like a whole other world, you know? But my family still lives there and I love going back there and experiencing the real people. But then, um, you know, just getting away from that. But what's funny is that I'm caught up in between two worlds that a lot of people normally don't get caught in between, right? So the people that run Manhattan and the city are blue collar bridge and tunnel guys that are from Staten Island and yeah, Queens yeah. and Brooklyn and shit, right? Jersey, like, they, they, yeah. So they those, like, the, the cops, the firemen, all those guys, like, the Port Authority, all them, they are, they're not, like, uh, people that moved here f- with a dream from Kansas yeah, or yeah. Paris or whatever, you know what I mean? But those are the people that live in the neighborhoods I live in, right? right. So, like, I walk around and, like, I'm right there with the construction workers and the f- cops and shit because I grew up with them. They're my boys, you know? Yeah. My best friends to this day are sanitation workers. But I live in the building with, like, the guy that invented Uber in yeah, Tribeca. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, it's... Facts? A, Is that facts? Or? Probably, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or maybe across the street he lives. <laughs> I don't know. Flex. It's Around all, the block. <laughs> it's all that same neighborhood, you know? So, it's interesting to see that world of, like, Manhattan versus, like, the people. But the fucking... Those guys, though, keep the city alive there would be no city for the rich people if it wasn't for the guys from staten island that are fucking digging the ditches saving people's lives and shit like kylie jenner or something like she got caught in an elevator in the city once when she was going to like a private party and guess who fucking saved them some guy from staten island i was at a wedding with him I swear That's to God, fire. and he's like, "Oh, I just saved Kylie Jenner for." I was probably at that party. How many times? You think, how many times you think he? Said I was like, that "Yo, story? let me call my boy. He'll save you." Yeah. What is that? How many times you think he said that story? Well, he had a picture with them, and she posted it. Oh yeah, yeah, because like, uh, yeah, you're stuck in an elevator. Someone saves you. It's it's important, you know. You no, know, I saved Kylie Jenner one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what the headline was. Staten Island guy saves it. <laughs> Kylie Jenner. Literally, and then you know, and and the and the best part is that those guys probably didn't give a fuck. They were just yeah. like, I'm working, yeah, just regular. whatever, like just another saving a bunch of girls going to some penthouse party. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. what's a normal day like for you now? <clears throat> um, ninety eight percent of the time, um, working out. Um, I like to stay healthy, you know, so like, that's why I love the city too, is cause like I'm always going on runs. Um, I start the day, do like a cardio, then I walk to the gym. I'm like constantly moving. I have like a very anxious mind. So like I have to get that anxiety out. So I'm constantly moving, walking my dog. Like my whole day is like a workout living in the city, which is funny too. Cause people think that like when you live in LA, obviously the weather's better and shit, but I work out more now in the city because I'm always like on the go. I'm walking everywhere. I'm like just going, I'm struggling, you know, um, which is a good struggle to have. So yeah. So like I, every day I wake up, I usually go for like a little bit of a run and then I'll come home. I'll like eat some lunch, some eat clean, bro. Eat perhaps. Clean, bro. Shout out to eat clean, bro. Then I'll, uh, then like I'll do my second workout, which is like weights. I'll go to like my gym or something like that. And then, and this is like what I'm not working by the way. Like I still have jobs. Um, you'll cook a little bit like the keto, the keto. I'll, I'll, I'll cook. I'll cook. It depends on like really what kind of vibe I'm on. Like I like to eat clean bros and shit because I'm go, go, go a lot. Yeah, yeah. So like, it just makes it easy for me to like count the calories. But I, I whip out recipes from that all the time. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, then like I, I take my dog on like a nice long walk and then, um, and I just call it a day, bro. Like, you know, I, I go in early nowadays. If I lived in the city, in my 20s, like the way that I used to party, mm-hmm. shit would be fucking dangerous. Yeah. Because I used to go, I used to drive from Staten Island to the city all the time, like three times a week, go to One Oak yeah. and party till like six in the morning and drive home and eat like White Castle on the way home. I was nasty. I was like, you know, I, I lived like a very unhealthy life. Yeah. And now like um, much more, you know, I, go, I pop out once in a while and shit. I think I'll go know. on a few dates here and there, you know. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> Calandra's Bakery, family owned since 1962. Luciana Calandra, Sicilian immigrant, started the bakery in 1962 in Newark, New Jersey, passing it on to his grandkids. The third generation, bacon bread the old school way. Located in your nearest supermarket in New Jersey and New York. You know, fine. I have so many things I want to bring up just from what I'm sorry you just I'm said. sorry if I'm talking a lot, too. No, it's, it's all good. I'm going to I'm gonna try to circle back on everything. The first thing was, uh, I think before we started recording, you were saying that 
you're like a real foodie. Yeah. But you're also really into eating healthy. Yeah. So how do you balance the two? Yeah. So like this book, shout out the Keto Guido Cookbook. Like I didn't even do this book to make money or anything like that. It's just like I thought it was cool. And like even like anything I do is like part of my authentic life. And people ask me questions all the time. Like, how do you do keto? Yeah, so I'm like, let me just make a book about it. So like, I could be like, here, buy it. <laughs> here's a, here, buy it, whatever, look it up. Like, here's how you do it. Like you fucking, it explains everything and gives you a bunch of recipes. Same thing with the jump rope. Mm -hmm. I started jump roping for fitness. Everyone's like, what jump rope do you use? I'm like, buy it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I just made one. Um, anyway, oh, fire. You, you made your own your own jump rope. Yeah, yeah. I just oh, I, because literally, like everyone asked me, like, what rope do I use? So I'm like, I, now I have my own. You know, it's crazy, bro. I, I tried like I just started jump roping like two years ago, and uh -huh. I don't do anything crazy like you. I literally just hit a hundred. It's like I hit a hundred, and I'm like, my feet are dead, my my legs are sore as hell. It's, but you're like doing though. <laughs> yeah, because like my, my I get bored, so like uh -huh. the jump roping is a form of cardio that you can keep stimulating your mind and doing different shit, like. You can try to learn like the simplest trick, which they're not that hard to do. Mm -hmm. By the time you end up learning the trick, you're like drenched in sweat. You're like, holy shit. Like I just, that was a full workout, you know? So that's why I like it because you can like, it's, it's, it stimulates your mind in a different way. Um, but yeah, so going back to the book and, and eating and stuff, you know, I think that like life is about balance, right? I love like the 80, 20 rule to everything, to alcohol, to partying, to, you know, to life, to food, especially I'm like strict most of the time. And that buys me the 20% where I could like fuck off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So like I have my, my cheat meals that I just are my go-to ones that keep me going. Cause honestly, I think everyone should have like a cheat meal once in a while, but don't go crazy with the cheat meals. Yeah. Don't start a diet for four days and be like, now nah, I'm going to eat like yeah. Four days of a cheat yeah, meal, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, what's your typical cheat? Are you gonna, gonna answer? That? Doesn't count. Four and four. That's yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just stay <laughs> the same. You just stay the same. <laughs> what's your typical? Like, what's your go-to cheat meal? So it's probably some kind of pizza. But okay. what happened? We're we gonna start ranking pizzerias now. Uh, <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> um, no, we don't. I mean, not, if you want what, to. But what what, hap to. what happens is like, uh, I find like so. This book is all about healthy alternatives to shit that's your favorite food, right? Because that's, that's the key, right? The major key is somehow finding what your favorite thing is that triggers you. And, and then you realize that you don't need the real thing. You need something that hits that same spot, right? So like if Trader Joe's makes like a coconut ice cream, coconut milk ice cream that hits the same exact spot as regular ice cream, but it's half the calories and doesn't make you feel like shit, why wouldn't I go with the fucking yeah. healthy one? You know what I'm saying? So with keto and I'm not fully, I'm like 80% keto because again, it's like about balance and shit with keto. You can still use fat and you can still use cheese as like a, I don't believe in eating a ton of cheese cause it'll, it'll make you fat, but like you can still use it. So it's not like the typical diet where it's just like steamed string beans and grilled chicken right so you're able to make like a lot of dope recipes like you know if i'm able to have like um zucchini with ricotta and sauce and form it into some kind of like pasta situation yeah some kind of big ziti or something like that like i'm like oh shit this tastes good but it just doesn't have like that extra loaf of bread that usually yeah. you would put in your stomach you know so i guess what i was going at was that like there are a lot of places in the city I have a couple key ones that make this like cauliflower crust pizza. And to me, at this point, it is better than real pizza. So are we going to rank his best cauliflower pizza? I only have like two. I only have two. <laughs> and a lot of them, what they do is the pizza is just buy the cauliflower. First of all, cauliflower crust is not real. Like you're not eating a fucking thing of cauliflower. They, they mash it up, right? They probably add it to flour and then they call <laughs> it cauliflower crust. But at the same time, but basically well, I'm just going for the more healthy thing. I'm just being a little bit more mindful. And if I can get away with like a thin crust that's like part cauliflower, less carb, and it just, because I, I don't need the loaf of bread anymore. You know, even if I was eating regular pizza and ranking pizzerias, it would be something that's mad thin crust, you know? So, like Napolitan style, like that. But that's like a little personal. soft. That's like, that's, that, that, that's like soft, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I like a brick oven, like yeah, crunchy yeah. kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, so I have usually my, so my point was that my cheat meals become, they're almost like healthy cheat meals where I don't need like, you know, 10 pies from L and B. Like I could do my cauliflower crust and it'll still hit the spot for me. Then I can finish it off with like the coconut ice cream for Trader Joe's and it still hits the spot for me, you know? So yeah, I don't know. It's just, that's a, that's a good balance. Yeah. I don't text you often, but there are like a couple instances where I text you. The first one was when I said, Vinny, you got to get on Clubhouse. You would love it. Yep, remember yep, remember yep, that yeah. whole that, Clubhouse That fell flat. Wow. Now, the, the second thing. Even though I see people still. So, yeah, there's, there's still people that are moving That's in crazy there. crazy to yeah. me. But, they're, uh, like, the, they're like the people on the Titanic that were playing the band. <laughs> 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 they're just like not leaving for anything. No, but that, I mean, it's hilarious. I was, I was really thinking about it. Like, yo, I haven't like really spoke to you since the Clubhouse thing. Yeah. And then um, I remember I texted you for Raya. So, did he, you ask for a referral? Yeah, I got you right. You got me right. No, I didn't go through it all. That's why the money. As soon as you said that shit, I fucking yeah, no. Because uh, one more, one more. What, what I, yeah. running back turbo. No, uh, but uh, what I wanted to ask was like, how is it on Raya for us civilians? Like, can you can you give us like a virtual tour? Of what it's uh, like in there? Well, oh, I can't. I don't want to like. I I don't want like knock them because it's like a membership kind of thing or whatever. Even though I think they've been more lenient of it. But Rai is basically like the the Soho house of dating apps where I you, was have, just gonna say you have to be invited on or, yeah. or referral. You have to pay a, a thing. And it just kind of puts people in like the industry together. Um, I thought that like I was going to go on there and see like Zoe Kravitz and like <laughs> Zendaya. But it was like Zoe Kravitz's publicist. <laughs> exactly. So like, It's a I- lot of like occupations I've never heard of before. And I'm like, what is this? It's like a, it's a lot it's of. It's like all people in the industry, though. Yeah, like, but they do the work behind the scenes. Yeah. It's like a lot of founders. So I know it's for the women, it's that, but the men are all like, you know, for the women, it's what? For the women, it's like the background people. You no, know I was I mean? gonna say because because guys like even celebrity guys are horny. So for guys, it'll probably be anybody. Uh-huh. I think that they see more famous faces of like DJs, and I think like Ben Affleck was on there and shit. But I, yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah, rumor. I bet you they they see a lot of like like even Drake just said it in a caption or something like that. Or at one point he was like talking about Raya and like didn't Michael B. Jordan say it on SNL? Like guys are thirsty and horny, so like they will even celebrities will go on it, but not so much women celebrities they they could do without it so you're not going to really see there might be like one kind of myth that like amber rose was on it once or something like that that's but, fire though. but that's who i was kind of expecting to see but no it's a lot of like just like it's honestly it's not that good so you never were it never worked out for you on that um i mean maybe i've met a couple people but obviously nothing that's like it's my dms and dating apps are where conversations go to die like oh really yeah like this age with like talking and DMing and shit is like, it's all fucked up. Like literally it's like, Hey, what's up? How are you? And then it just ends right what there. What did you do today? what did you do? Like, what are you doing? It's like, this is stupid. There's like no real like human interaction and stuff. Once in a while it works out, but for the most part, like 99% of the time they just end like with nothing. So for all the ladies listening to this, what's the way to get, I mean, to I don't, what? I don't think they don't, they don't even want me at this point. No? I'm, fucking, you said you, I'm a right. dog, bro. Yeah. Get that dog like, in me. <laughs> dog in you? City so boys. Up. Like, no. How do you, how do you get your dates then? Like just real Instagram, life situations? Usually like Instagram, like not really like a dating app, but like some things happen. I don't really date anymore like that. I used to, cause like it used to be a lot of like going out, you know, like it used to be going to clubs and meeting people out and shit. I don't really do that anymore. So, and I also don't like hang out like. I just, I don't know. Where the fuck pe- where do pe- people meet people? Like, if yeah. you're not going out to bars and shit, yeah. I'm also really not looking for that type of person anymore that is yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm in a different place in my life, you know? So, um, maybe a good cauliflower pizza joint. Maybe, know? yeah. I no, mean, it, it just has to happen naturally. It just has to, like, you just have to bump into something. Maybe, like, a referral or something like that. Like, you know, my friend type of thing. But once in a while, I'll be flirting back and forth with someone on Instagram, like, liking each other's shit. Like, then, like three posts. Like three posts. Comment your number on a post. I, that was back in the nah, day. Nah, nah. I follow. I, after the like in three posts, I'll follow. Then they'll like two stories. They'll follow back. Like a couple stories. Couple highlight stories. Yeah, like yeah. That. And then you finally go in for the kill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then Bro, you were gonna say something, I cut you off. <laughs> no, nah, I was talking about Raya. We had you know Mateo Lane? He's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, he's a comedian. Yeah. He was telling us because Sabino likes to bring up Raya with you know the 
notable guest. Over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, What's I'm your life on the other side? Up. He's trying to build up his referrals over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, Mateo was saying how he only had like, there was like only six people within the area and they all suck. So I was just curious, is the volume of people there? or No, it now it's there because um, it used to be like very exclusive. I think they've opened it up a little bit. But like as soon as I open up right now, like the first three girls will be from Germany. Or like Brazil, like for some, they like throw you with some people that are like in another planet. Book a flight. Yeah, book a spaceship, <laughs> and then fucking, then they'll start to go like more local and stuff, you know. Yeah, shout outs to Nico Kuj, my boy Anti MSG in here. But Kuj just walking in. I gotta bring up a story. We're talking about dating apps. What up, Nico? So I've never been more jealous of someone than this kid's hinges likes. <laughs> Who? Kuj. Oh like, yeah. I swear he has like thousands. <laughs> Like, yeah, but that's, too ma- that's the problem. That's too many. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. I never met Kuj. Right. What's up, bro? These are the like two goats of Staten Island. Yeah, right? I've been following him for forever since the yeah, beginning. So yeah, no, no. You too many is too many is no good. You know, that's like when I do club appearances and shit. And there's like thousand girls there. It's like this is this sucks. I can't. You don't have I can't a handler. talk. To, I can't you don't talk. have a handler like. I, how Drake says it, like, I, my man, my, he knows. What I, I used like. to, like, bring my boys. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I used to bring my boys, and, like, I'll be like, you know, you guys have fun. And then if there's someone who I want to talk to at the end of the night. So you like Devin Booker it? What, what, what did he do? <laughs> you ever heard a story of Devin Booker? Nah, when he was banging a girl in the bathroom. No. <laughs> what was it? I did was hear like, that in story. the bubble or something? And it was like, he passed it to the whole team. You never... The girl was on I'm no gonna jumper. Defer. I'm going to defer on this one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think I... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, she just, sucked the whole... Yeah. <laughs> the, whole the whole sun scene. Next, I knew, but I didn't next. know. Nah, nah, nah. They, they usually will have their own fun, and then they'll be random. Like, I, I would end up having fun, but, like, I can't just be like, oh, I want that girl. Go, you know, whatever. It's not, like, a personable way when you're there to do a job, and there's millions of people... Millions. That, like, hundreds of people looking at you and shit. Um... Yeah, we actually used to have a code word for that. <laughs> like, like I would, like if I would be doing a meet and greet, and like there would be people like taking pictures with me. So it's the opposite of grenade. It would be it would be skittles. <laughs> skittles is yeah the opposite yeah of grenade. yeah. So we'd be like yo skittles, and then that like then like my other boy would be like hey you want a drink you want to hang out and then like that group of girls would like hang out and stuff. But not anymore. I'm not a dog anymore, guys. You're I'm a, a dog, guy. but like I'm like a nice dog. It's a nice dog. I'm like a. So, so if the right girl came around, would you settle dachshund? down? If the right girl came along when I settled down, uh, yes. What's the yes. perfect girl? Explain the perfect girl to you. <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna get me. This is like gonna get me canceled, for sure. Um, no, I don't know what the per- I don't know what the perfect girl is, but I will say that like my taste used to be when I was like coming up more and I just got into like the Hollywood world. Mm-hmm. I wanted like a Hollywood girl. I wanted someone that was like on a show that like related to me that like, you know, I don't know, was like in the spotlight and shit. Cause I do like being inspired. Like that's the number one thing to me is like, besides looks is being inspired by somebody like their talent. If a girl has talent and can sing or dance, I love dancers. Like I'm head over heels, you know? So I think I eventually learned that being on a reality show isn't talent. So, <laughs> but um, nah, like I would like to be inspired by like an actress or something like that. So I used to, yeah, I used to like people, like girls in that world and shit. But then as I've gotten older and stuff, like, I don't know, I've kind of changed it up. And like now I, I try to like, I like people out of that world, like low Instagram followers, no social media. Yeah. And which is hard to that, find. Yeah, it's tough to Because how am I going to meet you, someone yeah. if I'm trying to DM them, but they don't have social media you know but just like more of that personality that's not like me 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 let me try to be famous let me try to you know get likes and you know do all that shit so i'm, I'm going more of like a hate you know hate to say it more of a traditional kind of vibe you know what i mean like where like the, someone your mom would approve of well my mom would approve of anybody that I vibe with and like. And by the way, this isn't like the end all be all if some actress I met on that has a I don't. <laughs> trying to keep that door open. That has a million followers. <laughs> yeah. Like that girl I, I posted her recently. I was like, yo, she's the best. Uh Julie, she's like a Victoria's Secret model, like Julie Anna, whatever. She's like a uh Brazilian girl. Yeah, like I wouldn't say no to her. <laughs> but yeah, like I don't know. Like kind of just like more of out of the spotlight type of vibe you know what i'm saying like who who is maybe not like who's more like my mom kind of in yeah. that way and um 
Yeah, because people like they've always said like, "Oh, you're a mama's boy. You gotta you, you only want someone who's like your mom and shit." And like, I used to say no to that, but like as I get older, I'm like, "Yeah, my mom's pretty dope, actually." You know what I mean? She's like <laughs> she very took good care of me. She's very caring, and she like is the best with babies and stuff. And like as I start to get more into that world, I'm like thinking of like, you know, who can I like? Who would be a great family person? You know, so yeah, yeah, no, I, I guess. But that. who also is inspiring in some kind of way. Who like ha- like you ask who the perfect girl is and shit like who has like their own shit going on and has their own hustle and stuff but also are very like feminine nurturing can start like a family with and shit yeah I mean so. speaking of social media the problem nowadays is that there's so much temptation on social media yeah it's like even when you are in a relationship and all of a sudden you look at social media Man, we're getting like, deep here yeah I, I mean, thought I was talking about fucking this is, pizza this is, this is <laughs> growing up Italian yeah um, I thought I was talking about pizza in the Knicks I'm talking about Rob, fucking. What, what, what else did the temptations uh, of social media. Brock's you know, married, so... Oh, you're married? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, chime in. You guys yeah. having a Your wife would hate me. <laughs> <laughs> my friends, my married friends, like, they're, like I, I'm, I'm so calm at this point and shit. And by the way, I was always calm. Like, even when I was partying and shit, like, all I did was, like, drink a little bit. But... I would like wives like would hate me. My boys would be like, "Oh, they would use you as the." Re- it's one of they're the, the bad yeah, ones, yeah. not me. I'm like, uh, your husband is the fucking problem, not me. Yeah, you know, I'm a saint. I'm well, good over friends here. Friends take the bullet though. Yeah, they're taking bullets, meaning they're the ones getting the girls. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, and I'm I'm the one that's not getting anybody. But uh, yeah, your wife would hate me. It, for no reason. They just they just have this image that like when we go out, there's gonna no, be like, sure like a thousand girls in thongs around, which honestly might happen. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Depends on the night. <laughs> sorry, Taylor. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> we got a business trip with Vinny. Nope, you're not going, Rocco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but not like I'm not honestly like after going through like the whole phase and doing all that shit like for so long, I'm actually more trustworthy than you would think because that stuff doesn't phase me. I got like a million girls in my dms right now like literally sexting me and i don't even flinch you know the average guy might be like holy shit like this is crazy yeah. i'm not even flinching James Cooch would be like let's get weird what? i'm not flinching yeah, oh, that there's that, girls bro. there's nights I'll, where you're probably like yo Cooch has never, a favorite. Oh, okay there's nights that there's girls like doing it and i might think about it yeah. and i'd be like i just want to go to sleep That's right now crazy. i don't want some girl no demon time for you if there is it's more of like a like i'm going on a date you know like i'm i'm Planned out. Planned out. Like I, I, I like the person. Okay. I like the person. I'm not just like hitting up some random no chick. No booty that, calls. You saying? If it is, honestly, it's like a girl that I, ben, I, ben ben I like. Ben, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I kind of like. It might not be the one. It might yeah, not yeah. be like my wifey, but like it's someone who I have a connection with. She's in the rotation. It's on the roster. Oh, on the I roster. Mean, we, <laughs> me and Kuja right now. We just we have this little thing where it's like we're going to get weird. You know, that's yeah, just not, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. You want you want to get weird once in a while, but I know that I'm at the age where I'm slowing down. Is that even when I'm in the positions to get weird, I still don't really get weird anymore. Like meaning, like we could be out at a club, and like in the past, like even on Jersey Shore, when you're watching the show, we're fucking like every night, like what girl we're we gonna bring home, what girl, DTF, DTF, DTF. Yeah. Now, like if I'm at that time of the night, I'm like I can't wait to go home, go to bed. I gotta wake up tomorrow. I have morning. to go for a run tomorrow. <laughs> My dog's waiting for me, you know? Like, it would have to be, like, a very special someone to, like, yeah. come share that time with. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I've been dying to ask you. This is a little bit about the show now. Were you the originator of the, the fist pump? Was that you? Oh, that's a good question. Well, it's like. Because when I think fist pump, I do think you. Yeah. I, I mean, on my show, I was the first person to, like, that was my thing. Yeah. I didn't invent the fist pump. They've been fist pumping at the Jersey Made Shore. Made Forever, I made it a thing, you know what I mean? So, like, they made it a hot line, I made it a hot song. <laughs> Bars. Um, but, yeah, Nicki like... Nicki Minaj also gave you guys a shout-out on the fist pump back in the day on a, on yeah, a rap song. Yeah, everybody did. I mean, Jersey Shore took over the whole... Yeah. When there was a news cycle back then, without social media, that was Jersey Shore. Except the news cycle back then was, like, the Tonight Show and... The morning show and this and that, like celebrities all talking about us, rapping about us and shit. So that's what we were back then, you know. And it's funny now that TikToks, like there were so, like I I went to some random TikTok the other day and I clicked the first video and it's me talking. Like they were using my sound because now the old Jersey Shore is viral again on TikTok because the kids watch that. So it's kind of crazy. It just never dies, you know. So I feel like for me personally, the first season, super viral. Like, you guys really, like, changed everything for Italian-Americans. Like, I mm-hmm. remember vividly, like, season one, season two. Altogether, like, 
how many seasons? Oh my god! Because now you, if there I was told a couple you, spinoffs and yo, stuff too, if right? I told you, you would like wouldn't believe it. So we did six seasons of the first original run. Yeah, the original. And each season used to have like twelve episodes, right? Mm-hmm. So whoever twelve times six, whatever. Um, I'm a reality star. I'm not great at math. <laughs> so then I did a bunch of spinoffs. I did like the show with Vinny, which yes. was kind of crazy. And he met his his girl in there, right? Like. No, the show with Vinny was when the celebrities used to come to my house in Staten Island. Oh, okay. my mother used to feed them. Oh, like yeah, she okay, was okay, feeding okay, like okay, Lil yeah. Wayne, Broccoli Rob, and shit. Yeah. Um, and then I did the dating shows and stuff like that. But the new Jersey Shore family vacation, we are going on our, I think, the sixth. Okay, each season has two halves. They're each like fourteen episodes. Okay, so you have like season one A, one B, two A, two B. We're going on season seven of that. So we've done like over 100 episodes of just family vacation alone. And another one's about to drop on August 3rd. So we've done, if you include the first one, this one, hundreds of episodes pretty much. And then all the other fucking shows I've done too. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm constantly doing weird shit. So what do you like to do the most though? Like out of everything you do? Because you do social media. Like, yeah. I feel like that social media bag could be crazy for you. And what's the really thing that you're passionate about? Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's not reality TV. It's fitness, right? Well, I mean, fitness is always just like a part of my life and shit, but I'm more like when Jersey Shore wasn't on for six years, um, cause when the first season ended, it was like off. I went to school for improv at uh, the school called UCB in the city, Upright Citizens Brigade. And I really, uh, from my roots that I told you about before the Action. show, I... Loved it. I used to perform on the, like, stage, like, you know, Cypher Sounds? Yeah, of course. Like, he did UCB. Like, it's where a lot of people would go to, like, when you weren't, like, a stand-up comedian, you kind of, like, you're part of a team and you put on shows. It's, like, where people used to go to, like, be on SNL. So, and it's a school. So, you go to school there, you take classes, and you perform in shows and stuff. So, that whole, like, comedy, sketch comedy world is my favorite. I think that's why I'm good at TikTok because yeah. like my dream would to be was would be to have a sketch comedy show like a key and, like a key and peel or something like yeah. 3 minute sketches funny get in get out kind of shit um and that's why like I've dived into stand up a little bit too and stand up has always been I've been doing stand up on the low for years Oh really? Yeah, but like I'll go to like so I'll go up at some like random open mic and or like in New York usually like in the Yeah, city. yeah, but it's always like you wouldn't you wouldn't Are we know. allowed to come to the next one? You wouldn't know about it. I wouldn't want you there. It's just not, you know, it's stand up is like it takes you like 10 years to develop it, you know. I I don't I don't even know who I am up there. I'm not myself. I you got to figure that out, you know. So that's kind of like where I want to go um with my career yeah. the most and also Maybe there's a way to blend the two worlds together, like reality and stand. Well, I was gonna say reality, reality, reality TV yeah. and and comedy, mm-hmm. and like maybe make like a sketch comedy show like yeah. about reality TV. Or like people do shit like that, you know. Yeah. So um, I'm not gonna lie, like the reality shit is is the bag, and also it's not a like I'm so blessed and appreciative of Jersey Shore because we still do the show now, and all we have to do, people are just, they loved watching us grow up, and all we have to do is be ourselves. Yeah, you just, like, hang out with your friends. So when I say I don't love it, I just mean that I'm not, like, expressing any kind of artistic thing when I do it. I'm just kind of, like, being myself, and it pays good money. Yeah, and super as, big one. And as long as the fans like it, like, I'll keep doing it, but I still have that drive to create all the time, you know what I mean? And create my own podcast and do comedy and do sketch comedy and shit. So hopefully when you're watching this 10 years later, I'll be doing something like that, you yeah. know? No, honestly. So I can get that 2,500 square foot there you go. Yeah. condo. The Central Park uh, apartment, yeah, yeah. 80 mil. Nah, I don't want to be up there. Just I'll, don't get I'll, stuck in the elevator. I like that. Well, then, you know, my friend Tony will come get me. <laughs> Tony! <laughs> uh, yeah, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, like I said, it's one of the most requested my pleasure. episodes. And you've been on our show before. Yeah, and I want to thank Nico for connecting us the first time because, uh, you know, That's when right. I met you, we didn't have like a super big following, and Nico's always put me in positions where like, he's like, "Yo, uh, I'm doing a show with Vinny from the Jersey Shore," and I'm like, you "Yeah, know, I was really yeah. starstruck when I met you." Yep, I started yeah. following Nico. Um, I forgot when when did we connect though? Like, was it on that one? Was it on yeah, 2017, that? Yeah. Was it for this show? Was it the first time we met? It was uh, his show. Oh, it was his but show. it was that day though. But. It was that day, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. 
Yeah, and now... Yeah, t- time flies. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Ah! Oh! How you done? Rock has a little GUI tradition for you. What's so I don't know if you've ever seen it, but we do a segment called Overrated, Underrated, or Perfectly Rated. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, come on, I want to do the, oh, I wanna do the growing yeah, up Italian yeah, yeah. shit. So, <laughs> this guy's yeah, having a fucking psychological session, like a psychology <laughs> session over here. Sorry, guys. Talking about relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the one who's not the one? <laughs> so, Overrated, Underrated, or Perfectly Rated. Okay. Jim. You see where this is going, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He runs overrated, underrated. I would say underrated. Why? Because, I mean, you know, like your fitness and your health is everything. And without it, you can have all the money in the world and shit. And, you know, your life wouldn't, you know, I mean, without your health, you don't have anything. And also, when you get healthier and stuff, um, everything else starts to fall into place, you know, like... You have confidence. People look at you different. I've gotten a lot of job opportunities from becoming healthier. So, yeah, I think, like, you know, I mean, eating is fun. But, again, 80-20. Yeah. But how long have you been keto? I've been wanting to ask you. I didn't have a chance. Um, well, I'm not, like, again, I'm not fully keto, but I still believe in the keto way of life, which means that, like, I'm not inhaling pasta all day. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, like, since, like, yeah, 2015 or 16, I kind of, like, made, like, a transformation. And now I will... Like, I had watermelon today, like, but I, I went for a fucking seven-mile run, you know what I mean? So, just about balance, just about, like, eat good quality foods, a little bit of healthy sugar, a lot of protein, and that's it, you know? Yeah. I know you said you get sunburned. Mm-hmm. So, we do the tan? So, <laughs> now we're doing the tan. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, I don't want to say overrated, because, not going to lie, everybody looks good with a tan. Um, a tanning bed, overrated. I don't believe in that shit. You outside, know what I'm saying? Outside, so. outside tan natural. all day. So I'll say perfectly rated because that's right. That's natural. As I'm sunburned as hell right now. <laughs> it's great. I heard when you get a tan, it like contours your face. Probably, you know, yeah. Skinnier. Also, I do the, like I'm a stripper in Vegas. Like I do the Chippendale show. <laughs> and like when I get there and get tan, I'll do like a spray tan and shit. Like yeah. it knocks your body fat percentage down like two, like by 2%. Automatically Damn. by being tan. I think um, I don't know. If I mean, your, I'm just making that up. I don't but know if it was your Instagram bio or not, but I think you had some like Barnes and Noble's top seller and a stripper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't uh, know if there's many other people. That, New York Times best selling author and yeah, a stripper. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's, that's kind of yeah. classic. Right there. <laughs> All right, last one. Laundry. You still do your laundry? Yeah, I do my laundry. Um, is it overrated? I mean, it's definitely not overrated. <laughs> Um, so you have no mutans. <laughs> I would say just perfectly rated. Everyone just, you know, you have to have clean clothes and, and stuff like that. But All right, since you yeah. want to do more growing up, growing up Italian stuff. Yeah. Are for the clips, for top, the clips. Your top restaurants in New York City. Where's Vinny going to go on a date? If uh, uh, On a date? Your go-to spots. I mean, it's hard for me to... It's hard for me to judge Italian places from being Italian and stuff. You know, like... Uh, like the most world renowned restaurant will taste like not great to me, mm-hmm. even though I really I think Carbone is really good, mm-hmm. um, and it's like a name, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I give it respect for it's that. It's hard to get a reservation there. It is, um, but usually those places are like a disappointment. But Carbone's not like it delivers, you know. Um, but do on you a, prefer I prefer the red sauce joints, or do you like more authentic? Like Carbone's a red sauce joint, and okay. then you have like a place that's like a little more. Like risotto. You're not going to see oh. risotto. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like there's different Italian food categories. Okay, yeah. Like, there's like the it, Italian-American vibe. Yeah. There's also That's like... Red, the red sauce. There's also like the trendy, more like New York City, like like yeah, yeah. entrepreneur Italian place yeah, yeah, yeah. and shit. I don't know. New York has like so much good food and shit. But coming from Staten Island though, um, it's hard. You know, Staten Island does have the best food to me. It has the best pizza, has the best sandwiches and shit. So what are the best pizzerias in Staten Island? Um, so Joe and Pat's is always solid, but the grandma pie from Joe and Pat's, it tastes like my mother's face, like, bre- uh, fresh baked bread mm-hmm. with like pizza on top. My mother makes the most amazing pizza. You think her fucking homemade, ch- homemade pizza? Yeah. You think her chicken cutlets are good? Crazy. Um, so there's Joe and Pat's, then there's a place called, uh, Pizza Giove, which you ever hear Brothers Pizza? Yeah. It's like the same family, but they do more like brick oven. Um, amazing. Like just... You wouldn't get a slice from there, though. You have to sit down and like have like a, a like pie. a pie. 
Um, and then the like this is kind of like people don't know about this, but so Royal Crown obviously where yeah, you get nice. sandwiches. They use like they don't make pizza on Sunday, but they make pizza. And yeah, my kids love their pizza. For real? Yeah, they. they Bro, their margarita pie is my favorite pie yeah. on Staten Island because it's their bread. Yeah, it's no, so fucking it's good, you know. Not, and they have um the the Mr. Softy bread that's fire too. Mm. Like it's that. Softy bread. Yeah, it's like a twist, but it's like super like oh. a pillow. Oh, I see, I see. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That. What's that place? Uh, the tavern that we go. Lee's, Lee's tavern. tavern. Yeah, Lee's is good. Um, but yeah, it's in, it's not. It wasn't part of my usual rotation. But um, in the city though, I go to this place. I go to like uh, I go to this place, Lola Taverna. It's like a Mediterranean shit, like in my neighborhood. That's like a good like date spot. It's it's pretty solid. Um, there's a place called Little Prince over there. I kind of like stay in my. I don't really leave like my vicinity, like West Village, Soho, Tribeca kind of thing. Have you been to Don Angie's or no? Don West Angie's? Village? No. Nah. Mad nah, good. I don't. The problem is, like, I don't really eat like that yeah, yeah, so yeah. much, so that like when I do eat like that, I gotta just usually go with like my staple. You know. I remember one time you text me like, "Yo, do you have the, the Carbone plug?" I'm like, "Bro, you're Vinny." Like, <laughs> just message him. Yeah, but I see all you guys fucking. Uh, they don't Carb- give it up. At Carbone and Mo shit. Mo and yeah. don't give up the plugs. It's like pulling teeth. You shook them down. I'm like, you probably know somebody that knows somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because I just recently got the plug, like yeah. recently, but. Well, I hit up Mario, and he's like, "Yeah, anytime." Yeah, exactly. So I just like I don't want to be that guy. You know what I mean? I'd rather I'd, I'd rather not deal with like the owner. I'd rather deal with like the manager on the floor who's like yeah, doing actually, the everyday yeah, yeah. shit. Like yeah. that's the guy I don't know. Like if if I have to reach out, it's gonna be like some weird like you know to the owner or like a publicist type of situation, yeah, yeah. which is annoying. You know what I'm saying? I want to yeah, yeah. go to the door guy. That's just yeah. like, yeah, I got you. Give like, him a come, twenty. You come know? on in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and before you go, I need the top three. Italian American movies for you. Mm, good question. All right. Uh I gotta go with Goodfellas number one. Um I guess Goodfellas, Bronx Tale, and uh Casino. Am I thinking am I missing one? No Godfather then? Rocky too, yeah, I was gonna say. Rocky never gets in these lists. Even though Goodfellas, too, too many. Goodfellas. I mean, Godfather is like, um, it's amazing. Don't get me wrong, but it's more of like a cinematic event yeah. where it's like I have to like sit there and like fall in love with it. Yeah. Like Goodfellas is just like, yeah. boom, any scene in your face, yeah. leave it on at any point. You know what I mean? And it'll be. I don't have to know what part of the fucking movie I'm in. Yeah, like, it's, it's all true. good, you know? And Bronx Tale, I don't know. I just, it's not the best movie, but I just grew up with it, you and know? The quotes are the best. The quotes and, yeah. you know, like, yeah. yeah. I like, I, yeah, so it's good. Oh, yeah. Top three cold cuts. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're want, the, want, now we're doing you, the you GRI shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Prosciutto di Parma. Okay. Has to be, you know, the good shit. Um,. Bro, when I was in LA, oh my god, and I used to like want to get a sandwich. You have to see the shit I used to do, like because they didn't they don't have prosciutto in LA. Like be, like when you go to like a, a supermarket, supermarket and yeah. stuff, you have to go to like Giada D whatever her name is. Like you have to go to her specialty restaurant to get prosciutto. Meanwhile, fuck? like here you can go to any fucking deli and just yeah. like get the best prosciutto. Yeah, from cousin Anthony across the street. Literally, um, yeah, I, I I would like literally like I would go to like the deli section like not the real deli like the I would get like a French baguette and because like I like a thin like crunchy bread and then I would go to like the boar's head like the prepackaged prosciutto and then I would like hand them like can you make me a sandwich out of this and I would go get the arugula like they don't know the 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 formula you know but all right so prosciutto um honestly I'm more of just like a prosciutto cheese. I could go for like a nice uh, dry salami or something like that, especially across the street. That shit was fire. Yeah, the, the super sad. Super sad. Even though I didn't really know the difference until today, and I still don't know. He didn't even really give me a straight yeah, answer. Nobody has. It. He he asked uh, Jerry what the difference between dried sausage and dried super sad is. It's a difference in the spices that they use. But it's like the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's like a sausage. Thing. One's thick as hell. The other yeah. One's a little yeah. Close. So yeah. <laughs> glizzy. Glizzy. Um. So That's yeah, one, one one of those, but I like my <laughs> I like my salami. <laughs> Cut thin. <that. laughs> yeah, I like my salami. Like uh, I don't like it on a sandwich. I like like when like I'll I'll, I'll, I'll hand them the sausage and I'll be like, yo, can you like cut this up into little yeah, dimes yeah. for me? Yeah. And I'll like eat it like that, you know. And I like cheese, like truffle cheese and shit yeah. too. So 
But yeah, uh, that's really it. I don't really ha- eat a lot of cold cuts like that. All right, we got we got the boys waiting on the sidelines here. Vin, thank you so much. So where could people what do you got, find what's, what's happening now? The whole, right. crew, whole crew came here. We're gonna shake you down for some time. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm, here, so. I'm slowly. The group is growing <laughs> yeah. into like this is just normal, uh, normal day over here. No, well, I haven't had somebody from Staten Island. I get Mo yeah, saying yeah. Mo saying uh, Staten Island doesn't I mean, have the I, best I, pizza. I, no, I, I mean I don't know, man. I'm just biased. I haven't had Lucali's, well, I'll tell you who's definitely which I've seen you there. Pizza. <laughs> mm. <laughs> story that all yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I went there to like, it's good. Yeah, it's yeah. Different. Right. Like Chicago, like that. that they don't really eat the That's not That's Chicago is not pizza. No, yeah. The thin crust one they got is pretty good. They make like the tablets. Oh, thin crust. Yeah. yeah. The thin crust, like the Domino's. Yeah, I can see the Connecticut from one. The peanut I, gallery. I, just, I love it. I was just gonna <laughs> love say it. That. I can see the Connecticut one being good because like I like like a thin I lo- brick I love oven thing. Connecticut pizza is so funny. I never had it. Yeah. yeah, I never had it. Yeah, now he has beef with Barstool. <laughs> I'm not waiting three hours for Lucali, though. Yeah. Do you know anyone there? Or <laughs> not? We, we, listen, the, the, yo, I'm going to tell you something. If, if, Mo, if you take yeah. Vinny to Lucali's before me, we're done. I'm just I'm just letting you know now. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, good. Right, we're going to go there that's right now. The whole thing is, if, if we try to, like, walk in, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mo, when was the last time you paid for a meal? When was the last time you paid for a meal? 36 months ago. And you're proud of it. I have the funniest video you're probably going to cry. It is to make you happy. I called the guy making my cold cuts in the little Dominican kid, Ma, the whole time. I'm snapping. I'm like, yo, Ma. He's getting fucking mad. I'm like, Mo. I said, Mo. And then I got him with your father. I said, today I'm going to pay. I pull up $20. Vin, the last thing like, before, like, we're gonna, Uncle we're gonna Nino's like that. Here. Uncle Nino's that, never paid for a thing in his life. Exa- oh, yeah, exactly. He's a legend. You and Uncle Nino will get along. But before we close out, where can people buy the jump rope? Um, The jump rope, it's in my bio on Instagram because it's not like... I don't have like VinnyG.com. Uh-huh. So, yeah, if you just follow me on Instagram, you could see the jump rope and all things me. You know what I mean? All right, awesome. So, everybody watching, go to our description. Yes, sir. Follow me on Jersey Show if you don't already. And I'll be Thank back. You so much for I'll your be time. back. You know, we gotta six, make this a, a tradition. Yeah, every two you know years at least. I'll be like the I'll be like the third host almost. You All know right, what I mean? I'll take that. Thanks, <laughs> Vinny. Right. Yes.